Hey, welcome to a Behind the Beat mini episode. Today we're going over Larry Owen's interlude, which is the theme to Bob Ross's Joy of Painting. Let's check it out. Every part of this performance is on the MC101. I'm going to put the project file onto Patreon so that you can just download it, put it into your MC101, and just play it at home. We're going to use this more as a chance to explore some different aspects of sequencing. So in the guitar part, notice that the notes are not consistent in length. The default note length on the MC101 is 0.8, so if we were to play the whole thing like that, it would be like which would not be correct. So you have to kind of pay attention to where notes are connected, where notes are separate. So for instance, that first note is kind of short and detached, and then the next two are connected. One leads into the next. So you want this note to have a longer length that gets at least to the beginning of the next note. If you take the time to do this, you can get very natural phrasing. If you don't take the time to do it, you could end up with something extremely robotic. Speaking of robotic, that's the electric piano part. This part kind of provides, it's almost like a pad. It's just there to back everything else. So it's not as crucial for it to be naturally phrased. If I were to have played this in live or even used like micro timing like on an electron box, I would probably do something a little strummier like instead of just the chords are kind of interesting here. It's just F major 7, E flat major 9. And then that repeats. And then it goes in this downward thing. So you have F major 7, E flat major 9, D flat major 9, and then C major 9. And that ninth is also in the melody, so you could probably get away with using a major 7 and then having the ninth just in the melody. The bass is pretty simple, it's mostly just root and fifth. which is a pretty easy way to construct a bass line. The important thing here, once again, is getting your note length and your velocities correct to try to get natural phrasing and articulation. As with the guitar, if you really take the time to get your note length and velocities correct, you can get very natural results. If not, you end up with... which is not really in the spirit of this song. It's a very relaxed bass part, and that sounds way too tense. The real takeaway here is the way that the hi-hat is constructed. So instead of just using a hi-hat, we're using a shaker and a hi-hat. And they alternate. So shaker on the downbeat and then hi-hat on the upbeat. This creates a really natural sounding alternation between kind of hard beats and soft beats. So let's hear it in context. And then we have that open hat on the and of four. What's important to keep in mind here is the choke. So if you have an open hat and a closed hat, the closed hat will often end the open hat. So right now the shaker chokes our open hat. So whenever we have those open hat hits, we don't want to put a shaker on the downbeat or it'll prematurely end our open hat. So instead it's... And with that, it's just getting your levels right. I recommend setting your levels with the master volume very low. Because if you can hear every part when it's quiet, you'll hear them all clearly when it's loud. If you hear everything clearly when it's loud, you might not hear it when it's quiet. And then you're ready to play the Bob Ross theme. 